Scales are the key to writing music. The notes of a scale complement each other and can be used together to create melodies, harmonies, and chords, giving you a solid foundation to build or write your own songs, as well as learn your favorite pieces from other musicians. The first scale we are going to learn is the C major scale. There are no sharp or flat notes in the key of C, and partly because of this, it is the most common key used for teaching and playing music. Later on, when we learn modes, we will refer to the C major scale as the C Ionian mode. The two are identical. There are three ways that we are going to learn the C scale. They all use the same exact notes, but each gives us a different fingering position. In the first box, we see a C scale which uses open positions. Also, notice that this scale only includes one scale note from the fifth string or starting string. It is important to play this with your third or ring finger. The next three notes are on the fourth string, starting with D open, no frets, no fingers, then E on the second fret, played with your second finger. Next is F on the third fret, played with your third finger. Then we move on to the third string, playing the open G note, followed by the A note, second fret, played with the second finger. Then move to the second string and play the open B note, followed by the C on the first fret played with the first finger. So all together, we have C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. Let's move on to the middle note chart for an inversion that lets us play the same exact notes in a different position. Where before we played one note on the starting string, here we are going to play two notes, starting with the C on the third fret, this time played with your middle or second finger. Next, stretch to the D note on the fifth fret, played with your pinky or fourth finger. Now we move to the fourth string, playing E on the second fret with your first or index finger, then F on the third fret with your middle finger, followed by G on the fifth fret, played with your pinky. Next we play three notes on the third string, starting with A on the second fret, index finger, B on the fourth fret with your ring or third finger, and on C, our root note with your pinky. All together, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. Our final inversion allows us to play three notes on our starting string. So on the fifth string, start with our root note, C. This time we'll play it with your index finger. Next, stretch your middle finger up to the D note on the fifth fret. Then stretch your pinky up to the E note on the seventh fret. The next string uses the same exact fingering. So on the fourth string, we play F on the third fret with our index finger, G on the fifth fret with the middle finger, then A on the seventh fret with your pinky. To finish up on the third string notes, we play B on the fourth fret by sliding your index finger up from its previous position, then end on the C root note with your second finger on the fifth fret. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. Now let's play each position with a tempo, forward and back, starting with a slow tempo of 150 beats per minute, then double time at 300 beats per minute.
When someone refers to the key of C, they are referring to the natural scale or the C major or Ionian scale. When someone refers to the key of A, they are referring to the key of A major Ionian scale, unless they specify A minor, A Dorian, A Phrygian, etc. The distance between notes can be measured by whole steps and half steps. A whole step is equal to two frets on the guitar. A half step is equal to one fret. When you want to change the key of a scale or a song, just apply the same pattern of whole steps and half steps to the key you wish to play in. So for example, the key of C, if we move that up two whole frets, the same exact pattern, we're now playing in D. If we back that up from C, two frets, we're now playing in B flat. You go one fret and you're playing in A. So that's all there's to it when changing keys. A half step is one fret. A whole step is two frets. Now the formula for a major scale from the root is a whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, and half step. The examples below show each key of the musical alphabet. Notice they all have the same major scale formula. Whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. Let's start with the key of C major. If we go up one fret, we'll be in the key of D flat major. Now D flat is the same note as C sharp. So D flat and C sharp are the same exact keys. They just have two different names. Now if we go up one fret again and apply the whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half to D, we are now in the key of D major. Up one more fret, we're in the key of E flat major. We go up again, we're in the key of E major. Then F. Then F sharp, which is the same as G flat. On the 10th fret, we have G. On the 11th fret, we have G sharp or A flat. On the 12th fret, we have A. And I'm going to demonstrate in a moment just to remind you that the 12th fret is also the same as open. On the 13th fret, we have B flat which is the same as A sharp. A sharp and B flat are enharmonic with each other. On the 14th fret we have the key of B. And on the 15th fret we're back to the key of C. And let's go back to the open position. At the open fret we have the A position again. On the first fret, we have A sharp or B flat. On the second fret, we have B. And on the third fret, we're at the key of C again. Next we have the minor scale, which will give your music an entirely different feel. There are three notes that change when we compare the minor scale to the major. 
The root and second notes are the same, but the third is one fret lower. This is called a minor third or a flat third. The fourth and fifth tone, or intervals, are the same as the major scale, but the sixth is one fret lower. So this is considered a minor sixth or a flat sixth. Next, the seventh tone is one fret lower, but rather than calling this a flat seven or minor seven, it is considered the dominant seventh tone. So instead of playing C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, we now have C, D, E flat, F, G, A flat, B flat, C. The formula is a whole step, half step, whole, whole, half, whole, whole. Here's the minor scale played at a tempo, first slow, then fast. The major pentatonic scale is the same as our major scale minus the fourth and seventh interval or scale note. Instead of playing C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, we now play C, D, E, G, A, C. This scale is used in all styles of music, primarily blues and country. Here are two ways to play the major pentatonic scale. The C minor pentatonic scale is similar to the minor scale, less the second and sixth scale tones. Instead of playing C, D, E flat, F, G, A flat, B flat, C, the minor pentatonic is C, E flat, F, G, B flat, C. Here are two common ways to play the minor pentatonic scale. Traditionally, the minor pentatonic scale has been considered the blues scale. In recent years, it has become common to see a minor pentatonic scale with an added flat fifth tone, referred to as the blues scale. In our scales, we have two different C notes, one low in pitch, one higher in pitch. This is called an octave. The higher octave is exactly double the frequency of pitch as the lower octave. Or 
If you want to look at it the other way, the lower octave is exactly half the pitch frequency of the higher C. Learning to find octaves on the guitar is a very fast way to learn your way around the fretboard. Here are some formulas for helping you find octaves quickly and easily on your guitar. Starting with the sixth string, you could find the octave of any note two strings down and two frets up. So if we're playing an F note on the first fret of the sixth string, the F octave will be on the fourth string third fret. If you play the open E on the sixth string, the octave will be on the fourth string second fret. If you go up to the D on the sixth string tenth fret, the same two string two fret formula applies. The octave is on the fourth string twelfth fret. The same formula applies to the fifth string notes. The open fifth string A note has an octave on the third string second fret. Two strings down, two frets up. As we already know, the C note on the fifth string third fret has an octave on the third string fifth fret. If we move it up one fret, we have C sharp or D flat. Both share the same name. The formula always stays the same whether you're on the sixth or fifth string. The formula for a fourth and third string octave changes because of the way the guitar is tuned. Instead of two strings and two frets, we now find the octave at two strings and three frets. So the open fourth string D note has an octave on the second string, third fret. The fourth string first fret E flat note has an octave on the second string fourth fret. If I keep moving up the fretboard, we have an E octave based on the second fret, F based on the third fret, F sharp on the fourth fret, G, G sharp, A, and so on. Again, the third and fourth string octaves use the same formula. So the open G on the third string has an octave on the first string third fret, two strings and three frets distance. The A note on the second fret has an octave on the first string fifth fret. If we match up both formulas, we can cover all six strings of our guitar with octaves. Remember, the fifth and sixth string notes have octaves at two strings and two frets. And the fourth and third string notes have octaves at two strings and three frets. So the F on the sixth string first fret will have its first octave at the fourth string third fret, which will have its octave at the second string sixth fret. Always keep in mind that this is a movable formula. Anywhere you move to on the sixth string, you can apply this pattern to find the next octave and the one above it. Moving to the fifth string. Any note we play, in this case our C note on the third fret, will have its first octave on the third string fifth fret, which will have its octave on the first string eighth fret. It is also good if you memorize these formulas descending. Starting on the first string, a lower octave is three frets down and two strings up. The next lower octave is two frets down, two strings up. The same formula applies to the second string. The lower octave is three frets down and two strings up. The next lower octave is two frets down 
two strings up. Yet another way to find a double octave is to use the same fret on the sixth and first string. So if we're on the first string eighth fret, which is a C note, you'll find another C, a double octave lower on the sixth string eighth fret. Depending on your personal goals as a musician, you may want to learn to play each of these scales beyond the scope of one octave. Since the guitar fretboard repeats itself many times, we have several options for playing each scale higher or lower on a guitar. To demonstrate, let's take our C scale. And apply our octaves to find an extension. So we now see that we can play this scale higher starting on the 3rd string 5th fret with C, then 7th fret D. On the 2nd string, we have E on the 5th fret, F on the 6th, and G on the 8th. On the 1st string, we play A on the 5th fret, B on the 7th, then our 2nd C octave on the 8th fret. From this 1st string 8th fret C, we know that we have a double octave C on the 6th string 8th fret. You can now apply the same scale pattern to this C note to play an alternative position. And you can keep adding to your scale using your knowledge of octaves. Let's run through all of the modes applied to C as a root. First the Ionian or major mode. Here's the Dorian mode applied to C. Here's the Phrygian mode applied to C. The Lydian mode. Mixolydian, Aeolian, Locrian. As an exercise, I like to take a root note and run through all of the modes. So let's run through Ionian, Dorian, Phrygian, Lydian, Mixolydian, Aeolian, and Locrian applied to C with a meter. Try experimenting with different modes in place of the major or minor scales. For example, you might like the sound of A Dorian over an A minor chord. Or, since the F chord is made up of the notes F, A, and C, try an A Dorian mode over the F chord. Since C is a part of the F chord, try C Locrian against an F. 
You can also mix these up in a rhythm progression. One measure you might go from the F chord to an F major run. The next measure you can go from an F to an A Dorian run. And then the next measure from an F to a C Locrian. Many of these scales come from different cultures around the world. While there is no form of theory or practice in using them in popular music styles, they still find their way into the mainstream from time to time. When exploring these scales, try adding them to songs and progressions you already play. While they may not always work all of the time, you will find some amazing phrases to add to your guitar playing.
two ways to play the melodic minor scale. Traditionally it's played ascending as a melodic minor scale, then descending as the natural minor scale. However, it's common in popular music nowadays to play the melodic minor both ascending and descending. First we'll run through it ascending and descending as a melodic minor, and then we'll do it again ascending as the melodic minor and descending as the natural minor.
I was when I started playing the guitar, you're probably amazed when you see a guitarist playing all over the guitar neck. We've created a chorus that makes this fast and easy. The number one best-selling guitar total scales techniques and applications is a complete chorus for beginner through professional guitarists teaching you to play anywhere on the neck of your guitar while introducing popular tricks and techniques to make your playing truly stand out. It is also available for bass guitar as well as different translations. 